Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to episode 3 of our platformer tutorial. Uh, in this episode, we're going to add some um, larger game sizes or scene sizes so that our level can be a little bit more interesting than just what's on our current workspace. So um, it's, it's really easy, this next step that we're going to do, but it's going to let us create a much longer platform level. So uh, let's see what we have so far. Let's hit play. Let's make sure we're all on the same page. So we can jump, we can fall, we can kind of bounce a little bit and go to the right. We can jump up onto these platforms. And that's about it, right? Can't really do anything else. Uh, so let's go back to the editor. And let's go to our scene attributes before we do anything else. And um, hit this little down arrow next to size. And let's change the width to about, uh, say, 2,000. Now this is going to be much, much longer, right? And we can extend out our platform about to there and we can drag over a couple more platforms if we'd like all right and then we can drag out another floor over here so that there's something for the player to jump over there's a pit of death right there you might fall in and we might think that we're ready to play our game and we hit play and we're ready to go and uh, we can't go off the screen, right? Nothing really happens. Um, so what we need to do is, as one step, or a few steps actually, in our player, we have to add a behavior called control camera. Control camera is going to make the camera follow it. Um, follow that player or actor wherever it goes. So we'll drag this in. Not into a rule, just right into the player. And you'll see there's nothing to configure. That's all we need to do. However, if we hit play, and we go to the right, it doesn't actually move until we get right to the edge of that camera. And that's not very intuitive for a platformer. So what we'll need to do is we'll click on this uh, camera tool here. And we'll just drag these in um, right to the middle. I like to drag it directly into the middle. This is our scanning area or tracking area that is going to track our character. So when I hit play and I get to the center of the screen, we can already see that the screen is moving, right? And we can get all the way to the end of our level and we have to jump over this. Perfect. Now our jump is pretty high and you know we can play with all that later but now you kinda get the idea of how to uh, create a longer level. And we can see that when we try to jump up here um, we kind of go off the screen as well. We don't really want that to happen so if we go back to the editor you can do the same thing um, we did with the width, with the height, and let's change that to about a thousand. We don't have to use all of that space, but we want to make sure that we give the player enough room to jump. So now it's going to feel like a much different game. When I go up here, when I go up here, there's a much bigger sense of exploration because who knows how far I might be going, right? Um, you can have uh, an entirely different layer of a level just by going really high up in the air. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of how you do that. And um, that's a really big part of creating platformers is making sure you have enough workspace. So, so that's our next step. Now, one thing we can do also is if we notice when we hit play, when we move backwards, our player doesn't actually change direction. Um, and that's, that's an issue, obviously. So what we can do is let's create a rule Let's actually make some room by making these smaller. Then so we have our move left, we have our move right, we have our space. Okay. So, when we're moving left, we're changing our linear velocity to a negative number. And when we're moving right, we're changing our linear velocity to a positive number. So if we make a rule, that says um, if attribute and we go to our players motion linear velocity x and say if that is greater than zero then we can change an attribute 
And that attribute that we can change, if we look at our actors' attributes, we can actually go into um, graphics, and you'll actually see there's a flip horizontal um, checkbox. So we can actually use this Boolean attribute, which is a true or false statement, um, flip horizontally, which you can find in our attribute browser. Attributes, player, graphics, flip horizontally and set that to, let's try true. I'm not sure which one it's going to need to be, but I'll set that to true. And then we'll make a copy of it, paste it in, actually let's not do that because it pasted the whole rule and that's a little messy. Let's just rewrite it in, change attribute, go to the attribute browser, we'll go to our player and we'll choose graphics and we'll choose flip horizontally and we'll set this one to false. Now when we hit play, uh, if we're going to the right, so now it's kind of the wrong way. It's left when we're going right and right when we're going left. But at least we know how to fix that, right? All we do is change this to false and change this one to true. Perfect. And if we hit play, then when I'm going right, our player faces right. When I'm moving left, our player faces left. Um, so that's really useful. What we can also say is if our motion is equal to zero, we can not animate, and if it is um, greater than zero, we can animate, or something like that, right? Or if we're pressing a key, for example, when we're holding left down, we can actually animate the, um, the graphic. So let's try that. Let's make sure we have some graphics in here. Yeah, we have an idle graphic, which is what we're using right now, and we have a walk animation. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say when we're pressing left, we want to animate, and we're going to drag these two by holding control. You can click on multiple graphics at a time or multiple pieces of media, and we'll drag both of these into our animate. And now when we press left, he runs. And we can do the same thing for pressing right. So in the move right, we're going to type in animate. And we're going to drag in these two walk animations. And let's try this out. When we hit play, our character is not moving. But when we press right, he's running. When we press left, he's running. And when we jump, we can, you know, manipulate him like that. Doesn't this feel a lot more like a platformer already? It's pretty cool, right? So um, let's go ahead and stop that there. I'll go ahead and um, save this. Make sure you're saving often too. And uh, we'll continue on with our fourth episode very shortly and add some more uh, cool effects and, and uh, pieces to this platformer. So thank you so much for watching and sorry for the delays in our tutorials. We'll get back on track very shortly. Have a good day and peace.